Hi there, I'm Ron Waterman, the founder and CEO of StorySmart, a nationwide startup that's committed to providing professional video storytelling for all. Today, I want to talk to you about whether you should own or rent your story. Now, it may sound a little provocative to frame it that way, but, uh, but there are really, just like owning or renting your home or owning or leasing your car, there are benefits uh, to each approach. Uh, and, you know, I want to walk you through some of your, your options uh, when it comes to, to sharing your story. And, and obviously, as the CEO of a video storytelling company, my, my paradigm or my uh, preference is to share your story on screen. So the context of, of this video is that. It's uh, whether or not when you're sharing your story on screen, whether that's a, a documentary film, um, a, a video ad for your business, um, a video story, um, or really any story, uh, you know, whether or not you should own it or rent it. Um, and so let me provide some context. So when I talk about ownership or when we talk about ownership at StorySmart, we're really talking about two fundamental concepts that are tied to ownership. Uh, number one is take responsibility, um, uh, that sense of ownership of your narrative. Um, if you're a business, we feel we feel very strongly that you should own your own narrative. Uh, you're the ultimate authority on you. And so when we talk about ownership, we're talking about that, taking responsibility for your story. Um, and then the second piece of that is we want you to own the copyright on it. We think you should own the intellectual property rights on your story. Uh, but you know, in our, you know, our value proposition as a company is we'll help you tell it professionally, but you'll own it as though you did it yourself. So that's, you know, that's the, that's the gist of it. And the reason that's part of our messaging is because a lot of times if you hire a professional, you don't actually own it, uh, because of the way the copyright laws in the United States work, the creator of uh, a story owns it. So, uh, that's relevant to the second side of the, the equation here, which is renting your story. When I talk about renting your story, that means giving the responsibility uh, for telling it goes to somebody else. So if you're, you know, I'll just use the paradigm of when I was with the St. Louis Cardinals. If the St. Louis Post-Dispatch or a local TV station did a story about the St. Louis Cardinals, they own it. Uh, the Cardinals don't own it, right? The copyright is owned by the TV station um, or by the newspaper. And that's really what I'm talking about with renting your story um, or leasing your story. When somebody else actually owns the intellectual property rights and they own the responsibility for telling the story. So that's, that's the distinction. That's the fine line I'm drawing for you. Uh, and there are benefits to both. So let me walk you through what I think are the benefits of renting your story. And by the way, I'm going to use a specific example of Story Smart renting their story uh, in, in this example. So one of the things that's a benefit to getting the New York Times to do a story about you uh, in your business or, or uh, your, your grandmother or whatever is that they have a massive audience, right? Like if you can get the local paper to do a story about you, um, or you can get the local TV station to do a story about you, you should do it. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's hard for me to think of a situation where I would tell you, no, don't. Uh, the real benefit to it is it doesn't cost you anything uh, for the most part. And I'm going to use one carve out there. But it doesn't cost anything. They, they have a, a, a built-in audience. Uh, you're going to be able to reach that audience. Um, there's little to no cost typically. Um, um, now, going into it, you need to understand that they're making money off of you, right? Like at the end of the day, if the Post Dispatch did a story about Story Smart, they're selling their paper, right? People have to subscribe to get the paper um, or buy it at the newsstand, right? Um, and if you try to read it online, you'll get a paywall, right? So like at the end of the day, they're a business uh, that is selling the news. Uh, and, and so you need to know that going into it. Um, you also need to know that you have no control over what they write um, or what, you know, if it's a TV station, what they, how they frame the story. So that's the, that's the downside. You have no control over the narrative. Um, they're the ones doing it. They own it. Um, you're renting it, if you will. 
Uh, and there are situations that you can pay to play. Um, and um, I did that. Uh, I actually worked with the local Next Star station here in St. Louis, which was Fox 2, and went on one of their shows. Um, paid some pretty decent amount of money to not only go on the show, but then they shared it on their social media. Uh, and I did that um, as a business owner. You know, I'm looking at marketing Story Smart. So I thought, you know what, let's try this. Uh, they're a natural fit from my perspective because the people that we use in our business are television reporters. I love what they do. Um, I think there's real value in it. Obviously, I'm <laughs> putting my, uh, my investment and my heart and soul into this business uh, of, of having a television reporter tell your story. Uh, and so I thought it made sense to pay them to let me go on the air. Um, I had to sign a bunch of paperwork um, that said they own it, it's theirs. Um, now one of the things that was a hook for me to do it is they would give me the video file and allow me to embed it on my website, um, which is what you can see. And I'm gonna, I'll show it here in this video. Um, so for me, that was really attractive. I thought, well, heck, this might be a way to kind of get the word out about us. Um, there are next to our stations in virtually every market in the United States. If this works, then maybe this is our secret sauce to um, getting the word out about us. Um, now, at the end of the day, I didn't control the production of it. Um, I, I was the person who was interviewed. Um, obviously, I have control over what I say. Uh, I'm not the greatest interview. Uh, I'm not always on point. If you're watching this video, you get that. Uh, so, you know, so there's, there's some downside, but for me, I saw it as a major upside. They're the number one station in the market here. They have a huge audience. Um, it was great to reconnect with some friends. I enjoyed uh, working with them. So there was real benefit to that. The negative is, um, you know, not a lot of people can necessarily afford to do that. Um, it's not something that's an option for families or individuals. It's really only for businesses. Um, and so it may not be a realistic option. Um, and that's the case with families and individuals. Like you may want the New York Times to do a story about your grandmother, but that may not be realistic. Um, it may not be really an option. So the other option is owning your story. And so owning your story could literally be grab your cell phone or like me, I you know, have a DSLR camera here uh, and look into the camera and talk and produce your own thing, right? You can do that. Uh, and there's real value in that from my vantage point. You own it, you control it, you control your narrative, you control who gets to see it, right? Like you can put it out there. Um, you, if you don't want everybody in, in, in their neighbor to see your grandma's story, you can gate it, right? Like you can only show it to your family. So that's really advantageous. Um, and you own the copyright on it. If you do it yourself, you own the copyright on it. Now, if you hire a professional, you need to make sure that in the contract that you retain um, all of the rights, uh, but that's the real, the real value of owning it from my perspective are really two things. You control the narrative, so you shape the story. And then you literally own the asset, um, the intellectual property rights on the asset. And if you're a business, you absolutely want that. Uh, from, from my perspective, I mean, we've all lived through the pandemic and when the shutdown happened, a lot of businesses that were not digital were scrambling, trying to figure out how do they stay relevant? How do they connect with customers? Did they have a media library? Did they have a library of video? Did they have ways to stay current on social media and all that stuff? Um, and if you, if you did have a library of assets, I know as I've talked to reporters around the country uh, to recruit them to join StorySmart, that a lot of them stayed busy. Uh, because they were helping uh, clients cope with that, that changing landscape that came about because of uh, uh, COVID-19. So, you know, from my vantage point, that's the real value. Um, and as a business, you know, you, you probably want to do a little bit of both. I mean, there's, there's you know, one, one of the things I will tell you is you can control your narrative, own your story, and then go pay media outlets to reach their audience. They're, they're all down with that, particularly on the, on the digital side. And that may be a great way for your business to control your narrative, own your story, and you know, get the benefit of you know, renting your story if you, if you work directly with them. So anyway, I hope you found all that information helpful. Um, it's, a, it's an important decision to make. Um, I recognize that not everybody shares our values, I mean, our values at, at, at Story Smart are that you should own your story, literally. You should take ownership of 
telling your story and that you should own the copyright on it. Um, and our, our niche is that we'll help you tell it professionally, but you're going to own it. Um, assuming you pay us, you're going to own it. Um, but I recognize that our values aren't everybody's values, and th that may not matter to you. It may not, it may not be an issue. Uh, the, only you can make that decision. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you have questions, as always, it's free to connect. I'm happy to talk to you, happy to uh, help you in any way we can. And until next time, stay story smart.